The technique zero shot learning or classification is quite interesting and becoming popular uh, in the recent days. Uh, let's say we have some documents and we want to uh, label it uh, two things, whether uh, it is positive or negative, uh, which is the sentiment. And then we also want to classify the document as either it is ports, science or business. Okay, so we have two target labels, right? Uh, one is the sentiment classification and the other one, the topic uh, classification. Now, uh, what do we do? So we take the data, uh, we label it as either positive or negative. We train a machine learning model and then we input the record. Then this first model will classify each record as either positive or negative. Okay, that's model number one. And then similarly, we take the same data, but this time we label it as sports, science or business, right? One of, one of the labels. And then we train a second machine learning model. So this model, when given an input record, records, it will classify them into one of uh, either sports or science or business, right? So these two models are independent of each other. And these two models, uh, the target data is, uh, sorry, the the target labels are different and the models they will predict only the labels which they have been trained on okay so in each case uh, these models are using certain number of examples let's say n examples so that's what we call n shot learning whereas in zero shot learning we are not using any examples to train the models okay so that's why it is referred to as zero shot learning so the way it works is let's say we have a model now instead of training this model on these two labels positive and negative what we do is at the time of inference we provide the labels so for this zero shot learning model we provide uh, hey i have this document classify it as either positive or negative. So it classify the document as either positive or negative. Then we take the same model, but this time we say, hey, I have the same document, but this time classify it as either sports or science or business. Okay, so it will classify them as one of these three. It's the same model, right? We are providing our target labels at the time of inference okay so we are not training any model using either these labels or these labels so that's why it is referred to as zero shot learning now it's amusing how does it really work what do we do is so we have an input record we compute the embeddings of the record okay and then for the given labels we compute embeddings for each of the label okay in this case let's say we have a data we have an input record so we compute the embeddings we have one embeddings and then for the labels so here we have a label positive we compute the embeddings for the label positive then we compute the embeddings for the label negative then we compute the similarity bit bit between the embeddings of our input record with the embeddings of label one then with the embeddings of label two right we measure the cosine similarity and whichever comes uh, shorter we classify the document as that label okay so in this case we compute the embeddings for each of the th three target variables sports science and business and we measure the cosine similarity between these three uh, embeddings against uh, our input record. And whichever cosine similarity is uh, smaller, we classify that, uh, that uh, document as uh, uh, that particular label. Okay, I hope you understand. Now let's see this uh, with an example. All right, so we'll uh, again take this fine food uh, reviews data set and as we saw in previous videos, uh, we have already computed the embeddings uh, using uh, one of the OpenAI models, okay? So here we have the records uh, where we have the summary and text. We have combined these two text fields 
uh, to a new column called combine and then we have computed the embeddings okay uh, this is what we have seen before now this time to simplify the problem a little uh, let's do one thing so here we have the ratings from 1 to 5 right and 3 being neutral so let's get rid of uh, the records uh, with the rating 3 and let's say if the rating is 1 or 2 uh, it is negative and if the rating is 4 or 5 it is positive we are just simplifying the problem right uh, we can we can have five labels like uh, very negative negative neutral positive and very po positive right we can do that but uh, we are simplifying the problem to a binary classification right so we are converting the ratings 1 to 5 uh, to just two labels negative or positive okay so here we have the rating 5 that should have been converted to positive and here we have rating 1 that uh, has been transformed to negative okay and all the records with rating 3 uh, we have filtered them out all right then what we do is so here we are writing a function uh, here we are writing a function now this function takes uh, the labels as input right so this can be positive negative or this can be sports business uh, for, for example in this case th this can be anything right so given a document we want to classify the document as one of the labels here now the labels list is up to us we can have five labels we can have uh, 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 anything okay and then we need to use the same model which is used to create these embeddings okay that's the reason why we are supplying this embedding model as well all right now what we do is we simply take this labels list we compute the embeddings for each target label okay so we are using the get embeddings uh, 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 module and supplying these labels okay and uh, our embedding model it's the same model which we use to create uh, the uh, embeddings so this is the one right so for the two target variable which are negative and positive uh, we have computed the embeddings and then what we do is for a given record we compute the cosine similarity between the review embeddings against all of our target label embeddings okay so in this case we have two right so what we are doing is here we are computing the cosine similarity between our record embeddings and then the embeddings of the label positive and then here we are subtracting that with the cosine similarity between our record embeddings with our first label okay so essentially what we are doing is we are computing the cosine similarity between uh, between our record with the label positive and then we are doing the same thing with the label negative and then subtracting this okay because we want to not only classify we want to have some sort of confidence for example let's say we have a document and when we compute this cosine similarity uh, let's say it comes out to be a very high value right the cosine similarity is let's say 0 0.9 and then uh, when we do the same uh, with the uh, second label let's say it comes out to be 0 0.2 so the difference is 0 0.7 that means uh, we are very confident uh, or the model is very confident that this is actually uh, a positive okay all right and then what we are doing is we are simply uh, taking uh, the probabilities uh, so we are applying uh, this uh, function over all the records right so we are taking uh, the embeddings and for each record in our data set so for each record in our data set uh, we are computing this difference uh, in the similarity score okay so that will give us our probabilities and then if uh, 
so here we remember we have used the second label first so this positive label first so if this difference is a positive number that means uh, it's a we classify the document as positive right if it is less than zero then that would be negative okay so that's what uh, here is the predicted uh, label and then uh, we have the sentiment uh, which is either positive or negative from the data frame uh, the true values and then we have the predictions so using this we can uh, we can build the classification report and then uh, here we are computing the roc curve okay to for the two class uh, this precision recall curve all right so we are calling this function now remember we just need to supply uh, so we are already providing the data frame uh, that by default so we simply need to supply the labels at the time of inference like here right so at the time of inference we just need to supply the labels so here we have supplied a label negative and positive uh, and also the model name now so here we have the precision recall along with f1 score uh, the model is doing quite okay i would say now coming back here we if our target labels are more descriptive we can compute the embeddings for our target variables more accurately right or we can compare them against our input data more accurately okay so if instead of having simply negative or positive of uh, as our target variables for which we have computed the embeddings here and uh, then use them in the comparison this time what we do is we use much more descriptive embeddings okay so here we are saying an amazon review with a negative sentiment that's our label one and then here we are uh, saying an amazon review with a positive sentiment okay so instead of simply saying negative and positive here we have more descriptive uh, labels for our target what this means is when we compute the labels for this and this and compare them against our input record embeddings and measure the cosine similarity that would be much more accurate okay which means this value what we are computing here the difference in uh, in this uh, will be much more accurate which also means our predictions will be more accurate okay so let's see this here so here we we have 0.84 something wrong let me check okay let me rename this yeah so we are done 0.73 and 0.94 and this time we have more accurate labels i think this line is exactly the same okay all right so here we have 0.73 and 0.94 right as f1 scores with our more descriptive target variables we have 0.84 and 0.98 as you can see uh, our model performance has increased that makes sense right because the way this zero shot learning is working is by computing the embeddings for our target variables and using them in cosine similarities right against uh, our input records so if we have a better description of our target labels then our model performance uh, gets improved okay i hope you understand that concept uh, clearly um so it's quite amazing uh, we don't need to train ml models uh we can do the same uh, concepts uh, for image classification as well so not only for text classification uh, uh maybe in one of the videos i'll show you an example of uh, image classification 
using zero shot uh, learnings okay so this is quite a great achievement in this field uh, because we don't have to train models uh, for every use case uh, we can have these very good embedding models uh, which we can use and we can provide the target labels on the fly during the inference uh, to get the results thank you very much